for September show. Sweet on. Morning, folks. I'll just get you up on the big screen. Tell me about quite your clear notices for the newspaper so I can see what you're saying. Right, morning, folks. Morning, Lorna, Alex, Stuart, Stephen, Graham, Barbara, Anne. Morning, Anne. Robert. Thank you, Harry. Okay. Mary. Lorraine, Jan, Grace, Lorna, Ryan, Jesus be here all day. Right, we're up here 100 folks, so let's get this uh, broadcast underway. It's Indie Truck TV, in the house. Alright, so I moved the truck in, in the house at my home in Salzburg, in my office. And uh, where it is, no a bad looking morning. It says 5 degrees out there, but according to the forecast it feels like 1, as you can hear the... The director uh, giving me that information as I'm relaying it to you. So that's the weather for South and North Lanarkshire. You want to know what the weather's like where you are? Look out the bloody windy. All right. Then we'll start today as we always do with a coronavirus update. Then we'll move forward to review some of the news that was, or some of the crap that was in the news at the weekend. Okay. So coronavirus update. These are the figures for yesterday, the 16th of the 1st, 2022. Tested in Scotland, the pandemic reached their shores, 4,121,291 people. That's individual people's tested, all right? So, basically, um, four-fifths of the population have had a COVID test. There you go. Tested positives in the pandemic reached their shores, 1,119,619 people. And that was plus 7,033 new cases. Now, once again, that's one-fifth of the population has had COVID, has tested positive for COVID, okay. In hospital, there is 1,540 COVID patients, and that's down four, of which 46 are in the intensive care units, that's also down four, okay. Vaccinated, 4,397,912 people in Scotland have had a dose of the vaccine. An increase of 1,110 people from Saturday to Sunday. 91.9% .9 of all eligible Scots have had one dose of the vaccine. OK. Of that, 4,397,912 people in Scotland, 4,064,533 people have had two doses of the vaccine. An increase of 3,674 people from Saturday to Sunday. 85% of all eligible Scots have had two doses of the vaccine, OK. Booster Jags, 3,184,700 people in Scotland have had three doses of the vaccine, an increase of 13,411 people from Saturday to Sunday. 66.6% .6 of all eligible Scots have had three doses of the vaccine. OK, so um, vaccine role is still going quite well. Deaths. Now, you're unusual with this, but there's been 21 deaths recorded from Saturday to Sunday. And that takes the daily total to 10,052. Community and hospital deaths combined sits at 12,545. Okay, so although there's a lot of optimism that this is over, these numbers are still pretty high. And the death toll seems to be quite um, big, but we'll get a wee bit more of that as we get into the report, okay? Right, hey, let's start by looking at Friday. Okay, moving on to the review, review the weekend's news. Friday started with two themes in the rags. Andy stripped of titles. And uh, uh, by his mother Lizzie. So Prince Andrew is now just common citizen. I suppose Andrew Windsor has been telling him he uses HRH title and all his military titles have been stripped from him. Okay, so... Um, it would appear that uh, the old Jelly Bean isn't that uh, confident that her son is innocent um, because she stripped him. She's no, she stripped him of titles to save the embarrassment of the royal family, and it would appear she's no stunning by him. So Andrew will fight this uh, case as a civilian, as such. Okay. Now, um, the the other theme in the rags 
is a the rift between the Tories in Scotland and the Tories in England. All right. Now, if the Tories don't book Bojo out of number 10 down that road, then it means there's a big rift between the leadership in Scotland and the leadership in England. And as they're by mounting their operation to try and save Bojo's miserable skin, we could find Ross in a lot of trouble. Um, but we'll get a wee bit merry that as we get okay. Right, moving on, Friday, it's announced that Oval Energy, who took over um, the retail arm of Scottish Southern Electric in 2019, is to shed 1,700 jobs with its offices in Perth, Edinburgh, Dundee and Cumberland all closing. Only offices in Glasgow, London and uh, Bristol will remain. Okay, um, Elaine Dougal of the United Union said it's a blow. And that the jobs one's gone, we'll not go back again. Well, that's obvious, and they're, they're streamlining their operation. Um, it's call centre staff for Tom Wee here. Now, SSE had a terrible record on customer service, and the Oval Tain it out, it didn't get any better. The cut of 1,700 staff means that the uh, customer services at SSE or Oval, whatever you want to call it, are about to get worse. Now, there was one positive announcement from Oval when it announced these 1,700 job cuts, and that was that it was going to open an academy, a training academy in Glasgow. All right, but I don't know what I don't know what that entails. But but how many jobs full time would be involved in it? I don't know what it is they're training them for. Let's face it, it's a retail arm. They don't produce the energy. That's still Scottish and Southern. They just sell it. So I don't know what the training would be about. But they're opening a training academy in Glasgow. Okay. Right, moving on, Friday, the number of COVID deaths reach, uh, reaches 10,000, or it breaks a 10,000 milestone, and it's not good. On Friday, there was 41 deaths for COVID registered for Thursday, Friday, UK. Okay. That's a big amount, you know. And all last week it was in double figures, so um, this idea that it's getting better, obviously I don't have the same data in front of me as the government and, and Jason Leach and people are, like, I don't see it myself. 1,500 in the hospital, and the deaths in double figures all last week. I don't see it myself. It's a case that we're going to have to live with this, and that's it. It's going to be left to rip. And we know that because um, it's all part of the strategy for Bojo to bounce back. He's going to lift all restrictions down that road in, in the hope of becoming more popular again. Okay, right, moving on. Friday. Um... The party gate scandal deepens. It comes to light that number 10 staffers had drinks parties every Friday between the hours of 4pm and 7pm. The events were even listed in the Downing Street diary. So it would appear that while the rest of us were locked down, couldn't see their loved ones as they were passing away, staffers at number 10 were having a week with shindig between 10, uh, 4 in the afternoon when they finished work and 7 in the evening before they pissed off him. Unbloody believable. Right, uh, so it would appear that he, um, Bojo and his staff had a culture of drinking at work, alright? And he uh, had been pushed to the wheel for long and weary. Okay, since 2019 actually. And apparently that's going to be part of a, what's in a Sue Gray's report. She's going to try and make an excuse for Bojo and his crew by saying the culture was there before COVID. You know, mental. It doesn't matter if the culture was there before COVID. The minute laws were put in place to ban large gatherings and no works parties and things like that, then the culture should have changed. But it turns out that Bojo and his staff have been pissed for the day that Bojo came to office. That would explain a lot, by the way. That would explain an awful lot. Right, moving on, Friday. Friday evening rolls around and a Operation Save Big Dog gets underway. Minister after minister's paraded in the press to claim that the restrictions had been too strict and the regulations had been too difficult to understand. So Bojo's mixed messaging is to be used as an excuse for Bojo and his staff being pissed all the time and having parties while the rest of us were in lockdown. All right. So we all remember the mixed messaging there was doing that road and they did a bloody clue what the restrictions were or nothing what was there and what was going on because of the mixed messages coming out of Bojo and his uh, team 
apparently they're going to be used to, um, it's going to be used as an excuse to try and save Bojo's job, okay? So Operation Big Dog, I mean, that tells you all you need to know about Bojo, isn't it? The operation to save himself, he's calling Operation Big Dog, he fancies himself as a big dog, uh, the big bulldog, you know, sparrow. Right, moving on, Friday down the street apologises to the Crown for holding two parties at number 10 on the eve of the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral. Um, eh, well, all Blizzy accept the um, apology. I don't suppose she's got any choice anyway. As it turns out, on the night that he, um, uh, the night before a Prince Philip was buried, there was two parties uh, down the street. One for a, the leaving of Bojo's a communication secretary and one for a, a leaving do for a <laughs> head of the COVID task force, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, but you couldn't have made that up. Head of the COVID task force, the one that's there to um, impose all the, all the restrictions and see that there's been a, a tier to has a loot, a party. <laughs> Yeah, we've been better than that as we go to know, all right? Right, uh, moving on to Saturday. Saturday started with two themes in the rag. The main theme is number 10's uh, um, apology to the Queen for boozy parties the night before the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral. And uh, as I say, the parties were leaving dues for the uh, um, Bojo's communications director and for the, the COVID task force uh, team leader, Kate Joseph. All right, so there you have it, as I say. That was the thing, that was, that was the, uh, one of the big themes in the, the papers on Saturday. They apologised to, to the Crown and the fact that the, COVID, uh, the head of the Covid task force <laughs> was having a piss up <laughs> to sell it to as a, as a leaving do. Ah, you just couldn't make that piss up, no you could. And the other theme in the rags, um, a... It's been reported that the... Um, uh, the other team in the rags was uh, Andy, of course, Randy Andy, but we're not going to cover much on that because, let's face it, there's not much to say about it. The Queen made the whole statement that needed to be stated about, uh, stated, stated about Randy Andy on the day before when she stripped him of his titles and told him he wasn't to use his Royal Highness uh, Monica anymore either. Um, uh, so there isn't much more to say about that until the court case comes up in, in September of this year, apparently. All right. So let's move on. Saturday, it's been reported that it's taken four days to get trucks across the channel. All right, Brexit is really starting to bite now, and commodities and food prices are about to go through the bloody roof as less and less uh, goods make it across the channel. Now, EU suppliers will be looking at the situation and they'll be saying to themselves, it's just not worth it. If you've got to, sit, you've got to pay a driver to sit in Cali for four days, then any profit in the load in the back of his motor is going to be gone. And of course, fresh produce producers are just not going to bother their ass trying to get the stuff into the UK at all. I mean, if you're a fresh produce producer and you're sending fresh fruit and vegetables from Spain and Portugal to the UK, if they're going to sit at, uh, at the port of uh, Cali for four days waiting to get across the channel, then the stuff's going to be rotten by the time it hits the shops. So, there's going to be a shortage of fresh foods and uh, commodity prices are going to get through the bloody roof. As I say, because if you've got to pay a driver to sit at the port of Cali for four days waiting to go on a boat, then any profit margin that's in the load that's in the back of his motor is going to be gone. Right, moving on, Saturday. Health experts in Scotland think that the, the latest wave of COVID has peaked and is now on the downward curve. Uh, Julian Evans, Head of uh, Health Intelligence for the NHS Grampian, tells the BBC that the Omicron wave is slowing and Professor Jason Leake says that uh, he thinks that we are over the peak but there are no more when more data comes in. Health Secretary, um, whom is the use if he takes a more cautious approach and he says no enough data to say that we're over the peak yet. Okay, dokie, but as I say, the, the line that's been fed to us now is that the Covid emergency is more or less over and that we're just going to go on with our lives. Because we will be forced to follow uh, what goes on doing in Westminster. We'll be doing a social distancing and shops and public spaces and face masks, which is basically all it is at the moment anyway. The work be home order and all that will be rescinded shortly, okay? 
Moving on, Saturday and the latest round of a um, seabed auctions gets underway with electricity generators um, bidding for positions and the coasts around Scotland. Okay, now it's hoped that this latest round will really kick off this green energy revolution that we've been talking about and we keep hearing about. Okay, now the plots that have been sold off will allow generators to generate up to 10 gigawatts of um, electricity from the seabeds around Scotland and that should be more than enough to cover real needs and export it as well. Okay, so that's a bit, that's quite a big story. Now we'll find out who won the auctions, uh, who won the bidding for these uh, seabed, uh, seabed pots today and then uh, hopefully production of the uh, wind towers, wind tower bases and turbines will get underway and hopefully some of that manufacturing will actually take place in Scotland for a bloody change. It's not as if we don't have the fabrication work yards, what it is is we're just not winning it because it's too bloody expensive to make here. Okay, doggy. And they, uh, so that's a good news story on Saturday, um, basically if, if they can get some of the work here in Scotland, but as the revenues for the the sale of these bid, uh, bits of seabed goes straight to Westminster. We're not going to see much of it. It's some part of Crown Estates, you know. So that's Saturday in a nutshell for you folks. Um, I see, I'm only picking the odd story here and there. As you know, I've got doing a three-day report here. I don't really have time to, to go into much depth on all the crap that was in the news, especially when we're going to, you know, um, doing that road at the moment. It's really mental. Um, the press doing that road, um, regional press especially, are a going to conservative association a, um, clubs, to as, as conservative association club, to try and find out what the feeling is on the ground about Mojo. So, um, there is, there, over the weekend, the main stories really have been Randy Andy and, a, of course, the continuing a fallout for the Downing Street parties. And the reason for that is quite simple, is because um, this all exploded last week to Prime Minister's questions on Wednesday onwards. The weekend's been the first time for MPs to get back to their constituencies and get a, a feeling for what their constituents on the grounds think. But we'll get a wee bit more of that now, OK? So, we'll move on to Sunday. OK. Now, Sunday started with a mixed bag in the rags, OK? Um, customers in trouble with a uh, record numbers. Of, uh, sorry, care homes in trouble with record numbers of staff of isolating because of COVID. So there's another crisis in the care homes here in Scotland. A new poll in the Sunday National says nine out of ten Scots want Bojo gone, and nine out of ten Scots think Bojo lied over the boozy parties. So as I say, these these same things will be going on right across England right now in every Conservative association and every Conservative club up and down uh, England. So Bojo really could be in big trouble depending on the feeling on the ground. Okie dokie. Right, Sunday, the Sunday Post said that uh, Labour are failing to take advantage of uh, the situation with Johnson. And they also say that uh, the split in the Tory party uh, in Scotland and England is a bigger risk to the union than the SNP. Ah, there you go. The Telegraph, it, I mean, it says that Bojo's wife, Carrie, um, she's a big story in the Telegraph, that two days after, two or three days after the social distancing rules were introduced in England, Carrie was out partying with a pal, no social distancing. Okay. Um, a Scotland on Sunday claims Bojo is um, a, as a greater risk to the Union <laughs> than the SNP. So you see there's a couple of themes there. You know, the split in the Tory party between North and South is a threat to the Union apparently, and Bojo himself is a threat to the Union. But we know that. He's the greatest recruiting sergeant that Scottish independence ever, has ever, ever had. Okay. And uh, the Sunday Express says the end of COVID is in sight. As I say, that's what we're being, we're being peddled at at the moment. We're going to be continued to, uh, we'll, we'll get that continually peddled to us. I don't see the figures have been doing that much. For, uh, before we go to the peak, uh, at one point we're up at 20,000, but they've all been, I mean, all the days after that have been between seven and 10,000. So whether we're over the, the worst day or whether we're just leveling off and riding along at, uh, on a gentle slope, uh, on the general curve of the wave, we don't know. We'll see as time goes on, all right? Right, moving on. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday comes to light that a 
Operation Save Big Dog. Um, we'll see Johnson throw staffers under a bus to save his miserable skin. Civil servants are to be uh, are to shoulder the blame for the number ten parties, but there's no surprise there. None. It's always the minion that takes the hit for the big dog. <laughs> so um, it would appear we're about to see a rash of civil servants get their ass kicked, shuffled around, uh, shuffled around um, a department or sacked to save Bojo's miserable skin. Bojo's going to claim he only knew about one or two of these parties, the ones he attended, and the rest of them was the staffers' folks. No wonder you're laughing, Dragon. Right? So, there you go. Staffers are going to get thrown under a bus to save Bojo's skin. Well, look! Don't know that. It all depends on how well it went at the, in the Conservative Association during England this weekend when the, when the MPs went back to their constituencies. And I don't think that all went really well for Bojo at all. Right, moving on. So the Sunday papers report that the um, uh, the, the NATO Russian talks have failed, and they, that a, an invasion of the Ukraine may be imminent, and that it may only be China, which is restraining the Russian bear. Okay, you know, another conflict in the continent of Europe wouldn't be good, but uh, as I say, it appears that the only thing holding back Putin is China. Um, China's invested a lot in Eastern Europe and they don't want to see their investments go up in bloody smoke. But of course, you know, the only, the only, the only, um, a, the only country really big enough on the planet to be able to stay in Russia and Putin is China. China's about the only one that's big enough to frighten Putin. He's not scared of the Yanks, he's not scared of NATO, but he is scared of uh, China because Russia is heavily reliant on China um, a, for, its, a, you can, uh, for its economy to keep going. Russia exports extensively to China and uh, Russia sells wads of gas and oil to China. So China's what's holding this off at the moment. If China takes the leash off Putin, then the Russian bear's going to gallop into Ukraine. Doggy doggy. So let's hope the people living in the border area of Ukraine um, don't have to put up with some bloody conflict. Okay, because that's the last thing we need. Right, Sunday, this is quite a serious one. Sunday it's reported that the Royal Navy is to take over a uh, channel migration operations. Um, uh, so apparently the Royal Navy is going to take care of the Home Office officials and police in the channel and dealing with migrants coming across the channel. Um, uh, now the Home Office said the move is to allow Home Office officials to concentrate on reforming the asylum system. But as we know, the borders and immigration building there is so draconian that nobody's getting in. If they don't come in through what they're calling legal legal routes, whatever the hell that is, then they're just not getting in. The Royal Navy will hoover these people up and take them away to Ascension Island or something to want and just put them there. They'll be outside now, I mean, that's for sure. But that's quite serious. I mean, the UK doesn't have a big defence force anyway, um, and the Navy's not that big. So the Navy taking their operations in the channel will deplete um, the Atlantic force because of it. There's bugger all over them, there's a long couple. Well, they've got 20, 30 ships and 200 captains. It must be a lot of reliable. Boom, spin a captain. Right, Sunday. Uh, it's a reported that the Tory branches are having votes on the PM's future, with the Sutton Coalfield branch voting unanimously to ditch Bojo. The grassroots Tories um, want him gone. So apparently, this whole saga is really, really getting up the Tory party's nose now. It's affecting their, uh, it's affecting them in the polls, and the grassroots are starting to get worried. Grassroots Tories are starting to get worried about the damage being done to the party itself. So, as I say, today will be a big day for Bojo as the MPs get back into the Commons and start talking about what they put up with when they get in. So that's going to be really, really, um, really, really interesting. Okay. And uh, the last story I want to cover for Sunday is quite an important one, and that is that Nadine Doris and the latest round of BBC funding is going to cut the BBC's funding by two billion quid. She's also telling the corporation that the licence will be faded out over the next five years, so the BBC are going to have to be reliant on commercial operations to fund itself. 
But, you know, the Tories were never keen on the BBC because the BBC was always there to hold truth to power. But as we know, since 1997, when uh, Tony Blair moved it into the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, the BBC hasn't been independent of government. It's been turned into one big propaganda machine. Well, anyway, it looks like the Tories are going to break it up, and if the BBC can't even stand the same two feet with its own funding, then it'll either disappear or its assets will be sold off. Um, because, let's face it, there's very little left um, of the public assets to be sold. There's only the NHS and the BBC left, I think, isn't there? Um, they can't outsource the military, else they wonder. <laughs> so, that's a big story on Sunday. Um, that they, Nadine Doris is to cut BBC funding by two billion quid over the next five years, and at the end of this round of funding, there will be no more uh, government funding to the BBC. So this is a, um, this round. The the funding uh, settlement comes up. I've seen it on broadcasting. The funding settlement comes up every five years, and it would appear that this is the last time the UK government are going to um, actually fund the BBC. The BBC are going to have to do it by themselves. Okay. So that's what I've got for you on the weekend, folks. I hope you found it interesting and informative. So let's move on to this morning and have a look at what the papers have to say. Now, I'm on the big screen this morning because I'm at home. <coughs> so let's have a look. The Daily Record has PM throws flunkies under the bus. Boris is blaming AIDS for number 10 parties. Scapegoat plot as it emerges. Johnson was at leaving do. So it appears Johnson was at another party and all. So it's another day of wash for Johnson, right? The Herald has police, uh, policy blitz to save PM as calls grow for him to quit. Um, so, there you go. Bojo is still the main headline. The Times has PM calls in military to stem flow of migrants. That's uh, the story about the Royal Navy taking over the duties of the immigration uh, and borders control in the Channel. And uh, the Scottish Government tells a, uh, the other headline at the, the Times is a uh, um, Scottish, uh, Scottish Government tells Westminster to act on energy costs because they're getting out of hand. Okay. The Telegraph has Johnson questioned by Grey over Partygate. What that actually means is Johnson sat down with a fixer, Sue Grey, and had a couple of glasses of wine while she tell him how he's going to, how she's going to bail him out, basically. Um, and the, the other uh, um, big headline in the Telegraph is Doris declares an end to BBC licence fee. Uh, well, that's the story that broke on Sunday. Two billion cut to funding. And uh, this will be the last time there'll be any UK government funding gone to BBC. Uh, only it's on the same two feet. All right. Now, over the weekend there, I know it's been come to pass that uh, apparently Keir Starmer is uh, being booted for a, um, by the Tories for having a wee drink with his staff in his constituency office. They're claiming it's the same as Partygate, but it's not. Okay, right, the eye has Operation Dead Meat. No big dog, Operation Dead Meat. Boris Johnson plans to save, uh, plan to save himself, does not go far enough, warns senior Tories. Okay. Um, the PM promises to sacrifice AIDS uh, and appease Conservatives with new policies. Dubbed Operation Save Big Dog um, and, and Operation Red Meat. You know, that's the two operations. One's to save him and the other one's to try and appease the Tories. But, but we're back to levelling up, folks. That's the tagline that goes with Operation Red Meat. Levelling up, all right? Something that's never going to be done, especially this Chancellor's policies. Let's face it, he's just whacked an NI hike on the poorest in society, you know. Um, so, Operation Leveling Up isn't leveling up at all. Right, the Looney Rag, the Daily Express, has PM fight back plan to level up Britain. There you go. That's Operation Red Meat, by the way. I mean, these uh, the titles of these bloody things are mental and all, eh? Operation Big, the same big dog, and Operation Red Meat. In other words, throw, throw some tip bits off the table at, a, at the Tory MPs, the Conservative MPs, to try and appease them. Right, and that's why it's been called red meat. Um, he's just going to throw tip bits at the Tories and hope for the best. Okay, dokie. The National has why PM going will not save Union, and that's Abby uh, Gallon Crosby who's written that 
a, um, opinion piece. And the main headline in the National is Tories in hiding. We've asked to speak to them. We've used email, phone calls, Twitter, the lot. We have invited every single Conservative MP and every MSP, the grandees, even the former Prime Minister, and every single one said they didn't want to talk to the newspaper. <laughs> well, it is a pro independence paper, isn't it? Right, the Metro has Oz Deport's tennis star, Kopak Djokovic. There you go, so the Metro stays well away from the controversy that's going on in a, um, down the street. Um, the Scottish Daily Feel has um, inmates can sue for being kept in jail too long. He? Yeah, you're right. We need to change the laws there somewhere if that's the case. Lawyers have told their clients they could be entitled to payouts of up to 180,000 due to delays in holding trials, according to the Scottish Daily Feel. So this is a COVID-related story, you know. Um, people have been held in remand for years now. Apparently they're going to they're going to be able to uh, sue the legal system. Ah, uh, what else have we got? Let's have a look. And finally, the star. Right. Um, His Royal Shyness, the, the headline in the star is His Royal Shyness goes to court to get brick cops to protect him. Totally ordinary bloke who does, uh, does totally ordinary things says a... Uh, Extraordinary. So apparently Prince Harry um, hasn't got a security detail to, uh, protecting him and his family anymore, so he's gone to court to force the British state to provide him with protection. <laughs> him and his family with protection, alright? So apparently Harry's got a legal bid to get security, to get the, um, to get the British state to stomp up security to look after him and his family. So that's the stories in the papers this morning. Um, and that's the review of the weekend over. I hope you found it interesting and I hope you found it informative. Okay, so let's get to the usual stuff and then I can get ready to see the dragon and get her to work. Okay, divided movements don't win their causes, folks. It's just a fact, they don't. So when it comes to the question of independence, it's eyes on the prize, partisan politics in your pockets and learn your how you gonies, all right? and get out there and win hearts and minds. Okay, so put party politics in your pockets when it comes to the point of the question of independence. Get out there and learn how you're going to use, which, you know, how you're going to do currency, how you're going to do borders, how you're going to do this, how you're going to do the next thing. So, and get out there and win hearts and minds. It's not a hard thing to do at this point in time with the British state actually in meltdown and in collapse. Okay. Right, support the independent media folk, support Broadcasting Scotland, support Independence Live, Indie Live Radio, support Caledon Media, support Drew's Radio, support the iScot Magazine and support the National Newspaper. Support independent bloggers and vloggers and if they have a crowdfund they're gone and you've got a few shekels to spare, please throw them in the pot because these guys do fantastic work. And of course finally we have the health messages, okay. Face masks in the course public spaces, as of today, because you don't have to avoid large gatherings anymore. There's still the social distancing thing when you're in supermarkets and things and, and in the pubs. We're a metre in the pubs and two in the supermarkets, all right. <coughs> Clean your hands and surfaces regularly. And uh, get yourself a test. Lack of more tests are freely available again, okay. Now usually that's the first one of the week out the road. I better get ready and take Madam Director to work. So you guys have a nice day. Look after yourselves. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye for now.